morning. Good afternoon. Good evening and happy almost anniversary. Yes, thank you. I'm Ariel. I'm Shia. Welcome to being here. Yes. And we've been being here together for more than 40 years. And on Monday, it will be our 40th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Holy guacamole. Yeah, that's what she said. You know, I, I was thinking about it today, how when people get into a relationship, uh, there's a lot of courage and potential optimism because who knows where it's going to go. That's true. And uh, so dedicating this to any of us who've ever given ourselves over to a relationship, whether or not it lasted for 40 plus years or whether it was a one night stand that you, that you went for it. So uh, if you're not familiar with our style, we tend to finish each other's sentences and uh, really enjoy that. I enjoy you. Oh, that's that's really good because we've been hanging out together for, for a very a long, long time. time. It's so true. <laughs> More than half your life. Uh, by the way, just as a shame. More than half my life, yeah, too. Yeah, now. Wow. Well, yeah, no, not quite. Oh, yes, because we, yes. we dated for a couple years. Earlier. That's yeah, right. That's true. More than half. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure everybody's interested in that, you know. Yeah, shameless <laughs> promotion on my part. We are doing the Living Made Easy on Monday evening, and I am inviting you to... Harness your optimism and your courage and come join us for the Monday evening while we celebrate our anniversary and really celebrate you. So you're invited. Yep. Uh, you know. I will we, when you tell me. We, we talk almost every episode about listening. Yes, we do. And that has been something that has been such a truing mechanism or, or yes well actually it's a truing technology that that whenever anything is out in our relationship yes. it's that we stopped listening to each other now what precipitates the stopping listening is generally an upset <laughs> yeah when things don't go the way you want when life shows up differently than you expect when you're thwarted in your intention to produce something when you're um you know and then you know when you get when physically you Ill. Ill or you've had a loss any of those things can trigger an upset and when you get upset you tend to withdraw into yourself rather than participate in your life or yeah, I know as you say, withdrawing yourself, that's true. But have a blame. That too. You know, today though, uh, I was speaking with a client who called with an emergency situation um, before we had this uh, podcast today. And what happened to her was she got locked in a mental loop that was being so hard on herself. Mm. And what was interesting was just connecting on the phone before we actually even spoke, she already felt better. And I really see that for all of us. It's not just that Shia listens to me. It's that the moment I connect in with him, things are already easier. Yeah. But I really, the willingness to hear what you have to say rather than get lost in what I think is important mm. uh, really produces relationship. And relationship magic. Yeah. That, uh, you know, something we're going to be doing uh, in the months ahead is we're going to revisit our books and the diff we have two award-winning relationship books. And when we first got together, who knew that not only would our relationship blossom, but would create an entire technology around what's possible in relationship that supported a lot of people in having blossoming relationships as well. Oh, that's true. Speaking of which, our first guest is one of those individuals we've known from 
the year we got married. Right. He spent uh, New Year's Eve with us between 1984 and 85. And uh, welcome to being here, Eric. Why don't you tell people where you're zooming in from? Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm zooming in from Brooklyn, New York. I want to say beautiful Brooklyn, New York. At least my experience right now is that it's beautiful. Yes. Um, and yes, I have known you a long time. Um, what's <laughs> interesting to me is there are things about me that I'm discover newly. I was going to say, and I've known me a long time too, but I don't know that I have. <laughs> there are things that I have encountered very recently that uh, I didn't know I was capable of, um, or I would have thought that's not my preference. And now I am enjoying doing them. I know this sounds cryptic, so let me be more specific. Thank please, you. please. Okay. Um, uh, my wife is recovering from brain surgery and she's doing very well but it requires me to be of more assistance to her than I think I've ever been to another human being. I've mm. never been a parent. So I've never had to manage somebody's uh, bathroom issues or helping someone move from place to place who wasn't already walking and talking and doing their thing. And so it's a very different level of responsibility that, I have to say, if you had asked me before or I thought about it, it would be maybe not my preference, quite honestly. Mm. And uh, we showered this morning and I had a lot of attention really on just making sure we were safe. Not strike that. It wasn't attention on us being safe. I was with her and in the process so that we were safe. Mm -hmm. There was not a moment where either of us was not safe. It was noticing where feet were going, what surfaces were like, getting the surfaces ready, and moving in such a way that everything was a dance and that the timing worked out perfectly. We have a bench built into the shower and it's a, got a lovely stone top. And so I do things like uh, there's an extended wand. So I heat the water really hot before Holly's in there. And I heat up the bench and the back wall so that when her bottom and her back hit those surfaces, she isn't cold. I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, but I did because I started before we even took the first shower together. I was like, what, what's needed here? And what's the timing? And I really looked at it. And um, there was no space for what if I do it wrong or I better not this. It was just literally like, this is how it's going to be done. Well, there's another thing. Okay. And that is you're not complaining that you have to do it. <laughs> That's a very big thing because I knew a fellow uh, who was complaining to me that the woman that he lived with was getting older and he had to take care of her. And it was all a complaint. Now, you had a rather catastrophic event happen when, you know, there was a brain bleed that uh, Holly suffered two years, two, is it more? It's more than two years now. Was it four years oh, ago? Oh, it was like six years ago, actually. Six years ago. And then the recurrence happened. And then there were, uh, re yeah. So, late last year. So, it, you know, you've, you've got something you could get lost in complaint about, but you've taken it on like it's your life and that this is it. And it's not that you have another choice. You see, it, choice is a killer. When you think you have extra choices, you know, like, there was once this experiment where they gave people a piece of artwork. They gave three different groups of people a piece of artwork. The first group, that piece of artwork was the only piece they were ever going to get. The second group, they could, after a month, change it if they wanted. And the third group, they could change it anytime they wanted. 
The only one that was satisfied at the end of this experiment were the ones that couldn't change it because they didn't get lost in, I'd rather. Oh, do I really like? I'm do picking I, it do apart. I, do I want to or don't want to? It didn't matter. See, when you start living your life like where you are is exactly where you ought to be, then your life becomes magical. When you live your life as though you have a choice in the matter and you, you don't have to or you can complain about it, then you're miserable. And it's just that simple. I know I oversimplify everything. I, I love it. Um, you know, as an attorney, which is one of the things I do, uh, sometimes things that I work on can get very complicated. And you can get in the weeds and forget what the whole point of what we're doing is as attorneys. Um, you get lost in the minutia of different types of laws and analysis. Um, and it's nice to uh, have this visual uh, in my head to go from the micro to the macro, which is to go from the very up close to spread out and just get a look at the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I that actually, if I may be so bold, I think that is part of your genius, Shia and Ariel, also yours, quite honestly, is that you guys are able to in my experience, I can get lost in things and you guys bring my attention back to the simplicity of what's possible. Well, you know, I had this amazing realization last night about you. See, when we went to uh, Pam and Dave's wedding, however many years ago. Maybe what, 13, a while ago. Yeah, I turned out. Uh, and you were married, but to a different lady at the time. And it was not a happy union at the moment. And we were talking about a movie. And you poo pooed that movie, and you had never seen it. Well, something similar happened when you said you were a lawyer or an attorney. There's a television series that was around, and we just started watching it, but it started in 2011. By the way, you're nodding and smiling, just so you know Sorry. that the, the, the uh, audience is many, listening, yeah. not seeing. <laughs> not seeing. Got it. I just don't want to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, interrupt, yeah, yeah. interrupt. interrupt. I know where yeah, I'm going. Good. Uh, in any event, uh, we mentioned that there was this series called suits and you said oh i know about that <laughs> yes i i i you're right i know of the show and i know the stars of it but i never watched an episode and, and, but, and you have no idea of the quality of it you only have like like with uh uh what was the other one the movie that avatar avatar yeah you just knew that it was just uh, just substandard. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're really enjoying the show. And having never seen it. Having never seen it and having no opinion about it. But what I love is you formed the opinion about, oh, I know that or I know of it. I don't have a real interest in it, which may still be true. But the idea was formed back when you were that person who was forming opinions and dismissing things. So when you said it the other night, oh yeah, I know about that. I know of that or whatever. It was like a flashback. Oh, well, what's interesting is I actually had the thought after that it was a great thing that Holly and I could watch together now. Like Absolutely. I want to watch it now because it's so funny. There's a million things on TV, and for some reason, none of them are of interest, or we've seen what we've seen. Right. And I really, I that the idea of that show appealed to me in this moment. Yes, uh, but you dismissed it out of hand, which is what most of us do about everything in our lives that is outside the the norm of our lives. You know, we are, we're, we're habituated to live our lives the way we do. And anything outside of that is oh, it's just too much work. Well, one thing that you, you and Holly- I like that. Sorry. It, it's just too much work rings so true to me. Um, I, I'm seen. I've been caught or yes. seen. 
Well, 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 it was so cool that the other night we were in the kitchen and I just she goes, really, oh, oh, wow. This I is really like, got it. It was like one of these enlightening moments in my experience of Eric, you know? Uh, well, I went into a uh, business type partnership back around 1987. So we've been doing this for a while together also. And it wasn't that long ago, I was looking at some of our really early brochures, which were fun because we we did color on them by hand. And when we did courses, we'd have people audition to be able to help us color. And it was so much fun to, you know, and then put them in envelopes and send them out. We hand did everything. It was back before, you know, things were able to be automated and labels and stuff like that. Right. Um, right. And one of the phrases we use or I use because it was for the freedom to breathe course because at that time I primarily let Shia uh, or voiced Shia into the limelight because I didn't know myself so well and didn't think I had as much to say as I, I do now. Um, sometimes Shia's like, really? You're going to let me speak? Uh, we talked about the greatest adventure is the one of self-discovery. And what you, you're describing today, Eric, is that you're seeing yourself, you're getting to know yourself, which is distinctly different from coming from a premise that you're broken and then working on yourself to get better. Well, that's the whole thing about what we teach. You see, it, we what we've discovered is our early conditioning has us think that we are somehow deficient or broken or not enough. And what we've discovered is that people, normal people, are brilliant. They're geniuses when they let the story of their life alone and actually get into the current moment of their life. In the current moment, well, you described it so beautifully before when you talked about how you prepared the shower for a shower with Holly where you looked and saw what was wanted and needed. You looked and saw that the bench would be cold, sealed, and, heated, and and how where everything goes, where feet go, so nothing goes wrong. That's brilliant. But I bet you, before this event happened with Holly, you thought you weren't very good with spatial stuff. <laughs> Yes, that is an accurate statement. It yeah. is. What people couldn't see of you is when you're talking about looking at the bench and you realize in the back where she was going to be leaning back and that you realize you would should heat it. You you actually did like a start, like what would happen for her if she sat down on a coal? It right. would be like this shocking moment that she didn't need like you were enough there to actually anticipate the reality of the situation and yes this has not been your pre preference but well, I don't know. life doesn't show up to meet your preferences it shows up the way it does I, i'd like to share with people also that i'm 62 years old i'm more excited about life than I think I've ever been. And I'm discovering new things and new capabilities at 62. I never thought that was how it was going to work. I thought I'd have it handled and would just like wrap this thing in a bow and be done. But it's much more exciting to me to be, okay, what are we going to learn today? Or, whoa, can I do this? All right, I think I can. Let's do this. You know, well, let's, I just find that more of an adventure. And just to be clear, um, I had not seen you for a certain period of time, like from the 80s until 2009. And the impetus, the reason that I sought you out was I was sitting in my living room, I see myself right now, very unhappy, not happy in my relationship, not happy working, just globally unhappy. And I thought, when is the last time I was excited? And feeling that sense of adventure, I was like, I was hanging out with Ariel and Shia. Whatever happened to those guys? <laughs> I hooked you up on the internet. 
And the rest is, as they say, history. I came to a Monday night. Back then, it was on 2nd Avenue. And Yes, uh, but again, I'm going back to the courage on relationship and the optimism because you restarted a relationship with us that had, you know, we'd gone separate ways. You lived in Boston. You took a bus from Boston to New York City because you invested in you because it was worth it. And it's so easy to go, that's not going to work either. Well, look, I, you know, I don't know, man. You know, most people just give up on their lives. Or they're getting by. You just know, getting it, by. It, it, it's get through the day. It's, it's with as little pain as possible. You know, a little, as little problems as possible, rather than live your life like it's an exciting adventure. I've been doing an exciting adventure for a very long life. Oh, yeah. I saw something new today, something I've never, ever seen. What was that? I saw a miniature squirrel. You know, you normally see squirrels when they are you look at it and go, that looks like a young one, but it's the same size as the other squirrels. This squirrel was about a third the size. Well, was, was it the same color? Yeah. Oh, it was a little tawnier. It is. It Were was, you sure it wasn't a red squirrel? Yeah, I took a picture of it. Okay. It had a little baby face. Okay. It was with the other squirrels, but okay. it was a baby, baby squirrel. Oh, It was sweet. so cute. I'm like, oh my gosh, all these years, I finally saw a baby squirrel. Well, you know, what I saw yesterday was a doe a female deer with four fawns four Nursing. and they were all trying to nurse at the same time wow uh, that I was don't... a deer that never planned on being a mother of four a mother of four you know normally they have one or two but i they this one actually had four hmm. maybe right. You know, but but you know, look, when you are going somewhere in your life, now the truth was I was going to shop right so I could get some horseradish, some scallions, and what was that? oh, and chickaboo. Boom chicka. It's Boom like, chicka. It's a it's a type of uh, popcorn, popcorn with a little bit of sweet. And Ariel likes it, so I was gonna get that for her. And so if I hadn't gone to the shop right yesterday, I never would have seen that thing. And then I went back. But they had all separated. They weren't attacking okay. Mama. Gotcha. It was a it was an interesting moment. Look, life is full of interesting moments if you're here. But when you're think, see, no two things can occupy you at the same time. So if you're thinking, you're not present to your experience. You know, uh, one other thing about that. Yesterday we had a living made easy at seminar and. One of the fellows, Thomas, came and he was talking about how he had plans for the day and he was heading out to the garage and he fell down the stairs enough that he needed to eventually take himself to the hospital because he had hurt himself. And then Shai was talking about and he was being pretty hard on himself about it. Shai was talking about, oh, I, I do that. I've fallen. And then, you know, you were talking to Eric just now about how life is this adventure of seeing things. And you came back oh, very yeah. excited about what you saw well, at the you stream know, I, today. I, I was down at the stream today. First off, I am amazed at who I am, you know, because they, 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 there's a little river near us, the Musconnect Con River, and they, I belong to a trout club there, and it's all catch and release. And they have a feeder there that puts feet out on the water once a day to keep the fish in the, in the area so they don't migrate way upstream or downstream. Anyway, uh, I, I've discovered that they really like those pellets. So I made a fly that looks just like those pellets and I'm catching these huge trout on this tiny little piece of cork that I put together. That's amazing to me because, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you keep no. going. Because when I see you and other fishermen make flies, they're really intricate or or delicate, and they're all mimicking insects or small fish. I have never, until you said it, 
thought of an inanimate object that they would be attracted to. Well, you know, we used to do with with if, uh, Costa Rica. There are certain fish, the machaca, that like to eat like nuts or flowers, so would do things that look like that. Oh. Or when we did it at Sueño Azul, we we'd throw them horse pellets, and they'd get so excited about horse pellets. So Shai made a, a horse, horse pellet fly. fly that looked like horse pellets. So. Okay, so I but let's let's go back to what I discovered. It got to be a quarter to ten in the morning. And uh, the feeder goes off at 10.15, because I've timed it now. And so I knew I had to get up river, because I was down river now, up river to where the feeder was for when the feed goes off and the fish go crazy eating. Well, as I'm thinking about where I have to get to, I trip. Now I didn't fall, but I saw that the the birthplace of accidents is when you get lost in a thought about the future or perhaps the past, because you're no longer where you are. And so tripping and falling is very easy. So when my friend Thomas fell in Germany, that was he just got lost in a thought and boom. Down you go. Now, for people who are elderly, I mean, I'm 83, so for, which is really hard to believe. Uh, I, I don't believe it. Well, I don't either. But in any event, that that's what it says on my birth certificate. Uh, you know, you it's easy to get distracted and it's easy to fall because your coordination may not be that good anymore or balance. But I notice when I'm present in my moment of my life, I'm very accomplished, able, and safe. It's when I follow thoughts, trying to get somewhere that I think is more important than where I am, that I get in trouble. I like that. I'm not going to, I think that should be the final thought on this, if I can say so. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Be where you are. Keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And when you're not, don't be hard on yourself for having left the moment. That's you're, right. By the time you notice it, you're already back. When he noticed that he was thinking he was already back. So working on it just so that little stumble in the river was like, oh uh, yeah, uh, here I, I am. See. I went off thinking about upstream yeah. and now I'm almost in the stream. Hey Eric, thank you for joining us today. And it's uh I know we did. We and thanks for of being each other our friend. For a period of time. That's the other thing, but, Eric. Yeah. Thanks for being our friend. It's really like, uh, yeah. But thank you. It's it's been, um, well, besides being an honor, it's been such an incredibly important friendship to me. I have a lot that I have in my life because of this friendship. Mm. Well, thank you. I say hey, in Germany, Selva Selva takes one to know one. It's it's like uh, we have a lot. We are wealthy. Uh, Having you and Ali as our friends. Mm. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you too, sweetie. It's time for our listener feedback spotlight. Okay, so here we go. We're going to hear from one of our listeners about how transformation has impacted her life or his life. Let's see. Yeah. And if you'd like to learn more about what we're up to, come, you know, you could register for any of our upcoming virtual courses. Or sign up for our newsletter. Just visit transformationmadeeasy.com. It really is easy. It is easy if you know the way. This is Janet in Jersey City. And what I love about Transformation Made Easy and the Canes is that it makes me feel good in myself. It makes me forget all of those thoughts that are constantly rummaging through my head and just not worry. And it just feels so good to be able to have that available. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. 
join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. As I mentioned, we're meeting next Monday. We have a lot of Living Made Easy seminars upcoming Mondays, Saturdays, and at least one Tuesday a month. You can check our schedule at transformationmadeeasy.com. Pick any evening or morning you like and come once or come as often as you like. Our next weekend seminar is getting close. It's trans transformational time and project management. And that's September 28th and 9th. It's a virtual weekend. So anywhere on the planet, you can join us. After that, internet. That's right. We have people from all over the world who do that. It's so much fun. And go ahead and be unreasonable. Arrange your time. We have people who do it in the middle of the night from Australia or Hong Kong or New Zealand. So, you know, feel free. Uh, also... We'll be in person again. We're in person all the time, but we get to meet in person in Hamburg, Germany for the Freedom to Breathe, October 31st. And the Art of Being Happy, November 1st through 3rd. And that, again, is in Hamburg, Germany. Any of the weekend seminars that you attend this year are the prerequisite should you wish to join us in Costa Rica for one week or two at the beginning of the year in January. You can find out more about any of our seminars and sign up for our newsletter, uh, which puts out amazing, uh, wonderful blogs, not only from us, but from people in our community, videos, and uh, great info. So you can find it all again at transformationmadeeasy.com. Let's take our guest. Yes, Kasia. Speaking of going to Germany, Kasia, welcome. <laughs> Tell people. Zoom hi. In. hi, Ariel. Hi, Shaya. Uh, I'm Kasia from uh, Munich, Germany. Uh, I'm actually come from Poland, but I live in Germany like half mm -hmm. of, ha half of my life. <laughs> yes. How old were you when you moved from Poland? Um, yeah, I've, uh, I was 21 or something like that. And now I'm 44. So, yeah, like <laughs> half of my life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, goes by quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, very quickly, and uh, especially with Whoa. kids. I think uh, the, kids. yes, the time with kids it's like speed run. <laughs> yes. Um. And how old are yours? Uh, ten and six. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I wanted to talk about my relationship. Uh, my uh, my husband and me we've been uh, twenty years for twenty years together, uh, and counting. <laughs> uh, I actually knew already as I saw him that I'm gonna want to be his wife. <laughs> so Sweet. it was like a, a love or like a attraction from the first sight. Uh, but yeah, but now with the kids and, uh, so much to do always, and so much things on the to-do list and so much mental load, I sometimes feel that we are just moving throughout the, our days and not connect so much as I would love to. Mm. Now it's also European uh, football championship. <laughs> He's basically watching matches every night. <laughs> and, and has, yes. has it occurred to you to join him? <laughs> I, I always... This I, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. You want him to join you. What if you join him, then you're together. But you got to do it like you really want to be there, not you're being there to get something else. You understand I, what I'm saying? Yes. I'm not <laughs> suggesting you watch football matches with him every night because clearly it's not what your appetite is mm -hmm. for it. 
but there are times like Shia loves fishing. I love fishing. I don't want to go every day, but there are times that I say, let's go. And <laughs> we go and it's very intimate. You're waiting for the circumstances to change mm -hmm. before you bring your your intimacy forward. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, you know, whether it's watching, there were times where Shy and I have watched football, American football, or we've watched baseball, and neither one of us have had a a huge passion. passion. For mm -hmm. But there have been yes. times where Shy has really gotten into certain teams. And then I can be like, oh, he's watching that tonight. Or I can sit down and be with him and bring my interest to those players as if I brought him to the screen rather than he brought me. Okay. Yes. <laughs> See, you've been wanting him to want to be interested in you without you being interested in him. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, romance starts when you're together with somebody. But if you're both doing different things all the time, it's very difficult to get intimate. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? But if you get interested in what he's interested in, suddenly you're both together all of a sudden rather than doing separate things. Well, I will tell you something. And I want you to come to the stream with me yeah, with, yeah, yeah. And, and do this theater <laughs> thing because yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, so I have an appointment tomorrow at 10. I'm just trying to figure out if I right. could rearrange it. Yeah. But we'll, we'll work we'll on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> it really I got so a, excited for you. It was for amazing. Me. Well, ah. you know, in, in those moments, the fish are, are, are completely into eating and not being cautious at all. So it's possible to catch these big fish with a little piece of cork. <laughs> <laughs> wine, wine cork has never been uh, more uh, effective. And just, uh, you know, but I, I, a very small piece. You know, uh, Kasia, mm -hmm. I have noticed something. I, yeah, I love that you're 20 years and counting. Uh, I have noticed <laughs> something uh, over the years, Sha and I sometimes go for walks together. I I enjoy it. We tend to make it a a device free zone, so we're not like looking up things or asking Google to define things. We tend to just like slip them in our pocket. Although sometimes I'll stop and take a picture. And I notice in general his thoughts run along certain themes, like fishing. My thoughts run along certain themes like upcoming seminars or and and it's that is always our starting place. So if I listen to what he has to say about anything, and let's in this case have it be about fishing, because it has been so far on this podcast, but it happens on walks. It's like, what does it matter what we're talking about? It's about whether or not I'm listening to him. And then sometimes I'm like, I have something running around in my brain. I just got to offload it. I've been really concerned about this pebble in my shoe. I don't know. I'm making that up. But it's, it's lovely just to be able to have that give and take. And I know it's harder yes kids it's far harder when you have kids true enough but that doesn't <laughs> can't make the time to be what's your husband's name uh, pavel 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 mm -hmm. pavel. Pavel. pavel yes <laughs> but uh that you know get interested in him mm -hmm. if you get interested in him you'll have a relationship that's passionate again but see, the other thing is this. If you want your relationship to be great, you got to give up making him wrong for being the way he is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And, I, 
yeah. I totally yeah. see that. A lot of the listeners are going, yeah, but he's got to stop making me wrong for how I'm being. No, it always, always starts with you. And and see, if you're being right that he's wrong, you're going to be judging him in your thoughts. No matter what he does, it's always going to be not enough. Yes. And, and you'll lose romance because romance dies in judgment. And in being right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Being right. <laughs> big crash and killer. It is. It is. It, because, because, you know, then you get a list of his transgressions, all the things he did wrong or he should have done differently. And, and, and then you get to be right about it. But you no longer have passion in your life and you no longer have romance in your life. You know, on a and, more and what's life about anyway, other than romance and passion? <laughs> yes. Shai and I have always been, in a way, interested, engaged in awareness, the non judgmental seeing of who we are and how we are, even from before the times where our life truly transformed and, and things took off and have expanded to be the way they are today. When we were first dating Kasha, and I know I've spoken about this on sometimes on other podcasts, for me, I was very, very physically tight, sexually tight. I wanted to, to have physical intimacy and experience being orgasmic. Uh, and uh, it was tough. And one of the things that happened for me is in my mind, I always thought, well, it's something outside of me that's making me uncomfortable. So we'd be starting to have sex and I think, oh man, the light's too bright. So I'd be like, could you turn down the lights? And he'd do, oh, wrong music. So he'd change the music. And I'd be like, oh, wait, wait, too many pillows behind me. And I moved the pillow or, you yes, know, yes. Uh, oh, I need something to drink. I mean, I had all these things and Chai was really lovely in that he never complained and he provided all those things for me. And at some point when all of the outside circumstances were taken care of, I realized it was me, that the discomfort, the fidgetiness was inside me and I was able to relax into it. And it, it was such a wonderful discovery. And I think as you're talking now, as a parent with two kids and you have a complex life and your husband's got a complex life, it's so easy well, those to are think all it's the, reasons. The, the outside circumstances that are causing the split rather than you haven't mm. discovered your way back into intimacy and well, you've let the circumstances be more important than the relationship. Mm. You see, the relationship feeds you guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're not being in relationship, you, then you're just living together, and it there's a then resentments build. One other thing that okay. you just may not have considered: you're not just being a mother to a 10 year old and a six year old, you are the historical download of all your familial line of what it is to be a good mother. So there are times where it's going to be harder for you to be with Pavel because you're being bombarded with the download of what you should be doing in order to be a good mother when they're probably just fine doing something in the other room, but you have this additional pressure that has nothing to do with the moment. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying you don't have to work so hard to be a good mother. You already are I know you're covering <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it all makes sense well it does make sense and I'm so glad you're here with us because look in you know if you just see a little something 
it can have a profound effect on everything in your life. And the little something you've seen today was that you can initiate relationship with your husband rather than complain in your thoughts that he's more interested in soccer than you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and I'm sure and you have you, plenty of, of uh, football widows <laughs> who, <laughs> who you could go into agreement with at all, or you could get yourself as excited. Yes. Include yourself in his life and you'll be together. <laughs> yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> you know, don't try it. Just fully full blown be it. It's it, it's You see, trying it ah. is sort of one foot still one out, foot but in I'll the water see if it one, works. Right. It, well, I'm gonna see if it works rather than engage in it. And like, have it be magnificent from the get-go. That's right. Yes, that's I like the second option better. <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. Have it have it be that this is the guy you fell in love with the first time. Yes. Sight. Yes. I she is you, very after falling in love with him first sight, going, Oh, this is the one, you probably did some romancing to get you there. Yes. <laughs> You yeah. may have forgotten romancing, and that may include figuring out when the football schedule is over and setting up a date night in advance. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'll, I want that. Yes. <laughs> well, you Good. deserve it. You deserve it. I'm so glad you came out. Yeah. It was so sweet of you to be here today. And what a gift for all those people who wrestle with the different parts of their lives to find themselves back to themselves. Really. Yeah, you're a gift. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm. I thank you so much for this conversation. You're so... Let us know how it goes. Yeah. Yes, I will. Let us engaged in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to. I bet you, for all of the listeners, you know half a dozen, ten people who parts of this conversations with either Eric or Kasha have jumped out at you that they'd love to hear it. Yeah. Feel free to be generous and share this podcast with your friends. Um, people deserve well-being. And sometimes it's just an idea that's never occurred to them away. I'm certain Kasha never, when I said, have you ever joined him? It was right. like, what? That mm -hmm. was yeah, that was She's not like, her where reality. Did that come from? Right, was her reality. There's the possibility you see something tiny, and then your whole world shifts. Um, so again, you can share the podcast. You can subscribe. You can subscribe to the newsletter. You can find all our courses on our website, transformationmadeeasy.com. You're invited. Uh, next week's episode, when is work not? We'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss, miss being here. here.